Don in London, hello, it's April the 15th, 2010. My video is all about recovery from addiction to substance and behaviour. My addictive substance for 35 years, alcohol. Don't think I was addicted all that time, but <clears throat> I did rely on it to fix me on a daily basis in terms of how I felt emotionally and spiritually. Emotionally in terms of getting over fears of life and spiritually getting myself out of the moment of now. So these days it's all about being in the moment of now and understanding what my feelings are and making the best of one day today. So how do I do this? Well, I'm part of a, fe of a fellowship, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for it, never can, never will. But AA is a large part of my recovery and the people in AA, unique authentic human beings with their own personal outlook, are the bedrock of my understanding where I get wisdom, experience, strength and hope to find myself just for today. So I share about AA, don't speak for it, never can, never will. So what is it? I'll share the statement of intent or the AA preamble that we hear at every meeting, whether we're a newcomer or an old timer and I'm somewhere in the middle. I like being a newcomer it means I'm still learning. So the statement of intent is this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So I share my experience, strength and hope about me, not about other people, but I obviously have been influenced greatly by the wisdom of others. So in the fellowship there's nobody on a pedestal, there's no guru as such and the more people who share about recovery in their own way privately with people who need it or in, the, in other arenas where we can share when people can't get to meetings or they just want to know a little bit about what the program does for a person. So AA has 12 steps of action to change my attitude and behaviour on a daily basis and it has 12 traditions which hold the fellowship together and it's often described as the steps help us stop committing suicide and the tradition stop us committing homicide. So either way there's a bonus in this. We get to live in the day, not feel like it's the end of the world and not want to end the, end the world either. And the 12 steps of action are covered in this book, Daily Reflections, one page a day. And April is all about step four which is taking a fearless moral inventory. And a fearless moral inventory is just taking stock. It's taking stock of where we were, how we got to that place of being addicted, what were the influences in our life, what made us angry and re resentful, and how do we change our attitude and behaviour so we don't go backwards. Knowing full well, of course, that we're all stubborn individuals, and if we've got where we've got to, we're still alive. So something has worked along the way. So we don't want to throw out the good, we want to find out what's getting in the way or blocking it from moving on. And in the Daily Reflections for today, April 15th, it talks of the bondage of resentments. And so I'll read it out. Harbouring resentment is infinitely grave, for then we shut ourselves off from the sunlight of the spirit. And the sunlight of the spirit for me is living freely in the moment of now. It has been said, anger is a luxury I cannot afford. Does this suggest I ignore this human emotion? I believe not. Before I'd learned of the AA program, I was, I was a slave to the behaviour patterns of alcoholism. I was chained to negativity with no hope of cutting loose. And for me that was deep depression, gloom and wanting oblivion and never wanting to wake up. The steps offered me an alternative. Step four was the beginning of the end of my bondage. The process of letting go started with an inventory I needed, not, I needed not to be frightened, 
for the previous steps assured me I was not alone. My higher power led me to this door and gave me the gift of choice. Today I can choose to open the door to freedom and rejoice in the sunlight of the steps as they cleanse the spirit within me. And, you know, it's only good for a day. This is the thing. We can go backwards and forwards in our feelings. And if we've had a pattern for a long time, it's not surprising, surprising that we revisit some of the olden days when things aren't going quite our way. Or in fact, if nothing's going our way, we can go backwards. And it's very important to know that because we're human and you know we can only make progress so the bondage of resentments you know some of the things which get in my way is knowing too much sometimes knowing too much doesn't help other people because it can make me a know-it-all so i prefer not to know and sometimes if we try and influence other people too greatly or suggest things which are true but an inappropriate for us to share. That is, what is truth? We actually block them from learning the truth. So we will have a learning journey, which is why we never try interfere too greatly in the affairs of other people. So overcoming that block of knowing too much means I have to shut down sometimes and not share exactly what I know. And that's hard, because if I do, a person can get stubborn and not listen. So it's not about me knowing, it's about another person or people learning sometimes. So when we share experience, strength and hope, I can share the truth generally. But if I target a person, then I'm actually trying to put my control over them. And the steps tell me I am powerless over alcohol and life will get unmanageable. It also says I am powerless over people, places and things. And it's better that way. I don't want to have power over people, places and things because with that comes control and manipulation and that's no good. And step two, all about being restored to sanity. The madness is going back and thinking, thinking that I know better when in fact I don't. So restore to sanity daily and understanding as life is. And step three, letting go and letting good things happen is experiencing the wisdom of other people which sometimes says shut up and get on. So not knowing can be a good thing. <clears throat> and I was just looking in page 50 on the 12 steps and 12 traditions, which is all, all about all of the steps. And it says here, By now the newcomer has prob probably arrived at the following conclusions, that his character defects representing instincts have gone astray, have been the primary cause of his drinking and his failure at life. Then let, that unless he is now willing to work hard at the elimination of the worst of these defects, both sobriety and peace of mind will still elude him. That all the faulty f will, will still elude him. That all the faulty foundation of his life will have been torn out and built anew on bedrock. Now, willing to commence the search for his own defects, he will ask, "Just how do I go about this? How do I take inventory of myself?" And the key in there is is an inventory of oneself not being told what your inventory is because taking personal inventory of, or taking inventory of others will just make people cross I know this because people do it to me as well so the part which goes with this video if you like which is about bondage of resentment I, my writing is this hurt people hurt people if we hurt ourselves we resent and find it hard to forgive when others hurt us we can be stubborn and hurtful back stuck we can be 12 steps to help us let go of our own hurt 12 traditions to let go of hurting others praxis makes letting go and being at one with life as it is imperfectly perfect now and what do i say at the end of these videos well the serenity prayer to the to god for me god is truth love and works through people but it's of your understanding which is important unique and authentic to you or simply to good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Indeed. Courage to change the things I can, me and my choices. And the wisdom to know the difference is always just for today.